Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video here today. In today's video, we'll be showing you a very fun find, which is called Byte Stash. Um, so if you've ever had to like write, you know, code, and then you're like, man, that was some like actually pretty good code, but I'm probably never going to remember how I did it, or why I did it, um, and you might need to reference it later. Um, and you're like, well, I can always try to remember where I wrote it. Trust me, happens to me all the time where I'm like, wait, I kind of remember this use case and I wrote it and I don't remember where it is. This solution will help solve all your problems where you can um, save all your code snippets in this thing, tag it, put it in uh, certain things that you can filter and uh, let it essentially save and search for so that you can easily find your code that you're like, oh yeah, I spent like three days writing. Um, on how to like figure out you know the use case or whatever um, and you can just keep a copy of that code snippet so that you don't have to remember how you did it that time so um, i'll show you how you can set it up with your you know server um, and what you need to run it so let's get started all right so the first thing that we'll need is essentially a server here right um, so we will go through our playbooks and dns so that we can configure a server running it and then we can install all the packages that needs and then install set it up um, so in this case um, this will just be another docker uh, compose uh, essentially file that we'll get off of the github um, and then essentially run it and then run it with docker so what we'll do is create a dns called byte stash set an ip for this vm that we'll be creating 153 um, we'll save that and we updated the serial so that it will update add byte stash and then what we'll also do is update our ansible playbook uh, repository which will include um, the inventory file for what host that i can target um, so you actually need the DNS set up so that it actually knows which host to target in, in regards to this. Um, and wow, I've never seen my GitLab take this long to initialize the web IDE. Um, so there we go, we refreshed it. So we'll add this in here as well. So byte stash. And then after adding this, we should be able to run our playbooks that will essentially create my VM in uh, Proxmox, update it and patch it, and then install Docker and Docker Compose. Um, and the reason for all that is um, in here in this in this workflow, um, it makes it easier for any you know, like new systems that we're running, um, as well as it will install some certs uh, or create some certs and set it up with Nginx so that we have essentially TLS. Um, so that's actually like super cool. Um, if you're interested in how all those works, um, feel free to take a look at my automation playlist series um, because all those are in there as well as in my GitHub, which I will link in the description. Um, all the playbooks are in there so that you can see how I do all the installs. So from here, we can hit launch and we will set up um, the, the stuff that we need. So the um, host name will be byte stash we just name it the same as what we would do the ip will be 172.16.1 dot and i don't actually even remember now um let's take a look what i what i set it to real quick um take a look at the file 153 um so we'll put 153 the vm name we'll just name dragon byte stash and then the pro proxy address so um, this is so that the pro it'll proxy pass in nginx to the container so let's look up byte stash github real quick and we can see in here that there is a repository um, and we can take a look and scroll down and we can see that there is a docker compose file that we can see and by default this docker compose will be listening on 5000 so we're going to use that technically we could update that to be whatever we want um to forward to but i like to kind of keep it consistent with what um the compose what they offer essentially um so we got by stash the ip what we all name it in proxmox um, and the proxy address here so we'll hit next and launch so then you can see here that we have essentially um, all the playbooks that are, will be running. So they'll run sequentially. Um, so it'll create, 
patch it, and start Docker, Docker and Docker Compose, which is what we'll need for this um, because we'll, we'll run it that way. Um, set up our certificates and set up Nginx for it. So um, this will take a few minutes, but once this is done, we'll get the rest of the setup going. All right, now that it has finished setting up, what we should be able to do is actually SSH into our machine. Um, so we can SSH root at byte stash dot dragon dot local. We'll accept the host key at login and we got a terminal session. Um, from here, you can see that we can do like a Docker PSA, see that Docker is actually installed um, and running. So what we should be able to do now is go back to the GitHub. We should be able to copy this config file and just create it. So we can create a docker compose.yaml and paste in what is in here. So there's a few things that, you know, you can update. Um, so, you know, we all set the volume so we have, so it, it saves uh, the persistent data um, in the volume. Ports will leave. Base path, I wasn't entirely sure off the top of my head. I tried a few things and didn't work, but technically I got it to work by not setting it. So I'm gonna just comment it out for this. Then we can um, set your username and password. By default, it will be byte stash and password. If you just copy from the config, you should probably change this. And by probably, you should definitely change this. I'm going to leave it just for the uh, sake of the video um, because I have a separate instance running. This is just for my video. Then you got your JWT secret. Um, so there's also a value in here already, but we'll generate our own and I'll show you how you can do that. Um, and then you can set how long your the token uh, last, which I think is just like a login token. Um, so by default, they, they put it as 24 hours in the config and we'll leave it at 24. Um, so we'll save that. Um, so to generate like a random token, you can use like open SSL, um, ran random, and then I think I would set it at like hex in like 32 characters or something like that. So that's an easy way to generate if you're looking for a way to generate um, a random key. So we'll just do that. We'll set it in here, paste that, and then save. So from there, um, now that we have our Docker Compose file set up, we can do a Docker Compose up and then hyphen D for detached mode. Um, and we can essentially see it, pull the container, and then start running it essentially. Um, so there isn't really too much to this. Um, it's a pretty, pretty small container, so it, it should go pretty quick. Now that it has done polling, we can actually do a Docker Compose logs um, just to see the logs. And then we can see that it created some stuff as well as the server started on running on port 5000 here. And we can confirm that it's still running and healthy. So status up, we can see it's running on 5000, which if you remember, we have the engine X playbook that will essentially do the proxy pass to that. So what we can do is actually type in HTTPS um, byte stash dot dragon dot local we'll get the login and this was the login that was in the config so um cat docker compose so this would be your byte stash and then whatever password you put in so byte stash and then password in this case and you can see that we have logged in so the interface is pretty nice. Um, it's great that the background isn't, isn't all white, actually. Um, usually I have to go, oh, I got to change the setting and do like dark mode or whatnot. Um, so I definitely love the color. But for those of you guys who are like really interested in how this works, you can add a new snippet. You can create a title for it. So like, say, for example, like Ansible header, right? Um, I've, I've done a lot of uh, Ansible stuff. So like all of my playbooks here. So like I have, you know, um, you know, headers like this and whatnot that I'm like, oh, well, sometimes I include the default, sometimes I don't. But you can add it in here and we'll paste that in there. And add a description that's like Ansible starting headers. And then you got categories that you can put in. So in this case, I'm going to just do Ansible because this would be Ansible related. Then you can select your code fragment, select the language. So this is YAML. Um, so, you know, it'll do the syntax highlighting. You can add multiple, um, you know, code snippets in one, or you can just do, you know, a separate one for each one. So we can add a snippet here and you can see in here, um, there's two ways you can view it. You can view it long or you can view it in like a tile format, but you can click on it and you can then copy this um, and then paste it elsewhere um, so that you can just use it. 
Um, so it's actually pretty cool, especially if you have, you know, more complicated things. I don't know if I have any like super complicated things in here right now. Um, but like, you know, if you needed to know, Hey, how do I do a when statement or something in Ansible? I could copy this as an example and then search for it. Um, so there are, there's also the searching so I can like, you know, search for like Ansible and things like that. Um, and it probably doesn't help that I only have one thing as, as Ansible, um, uh, to do the search, but you can filter it by, you know, what you have here and there. Uh, and you know, honestly, it's, it's pretty cool. So, um, apparently you can share a snippet. I didn't even, I didn't even know that. Um, uh, so you can create a share link, um, so that you can actually share this. Um, and now I'm kind of curious. Oh, you can just create a share link and you can, you can just share this with other people if you have like a public instance, um, so that they don't actually need a login as well. So that's actually pretty sick. Um, I do actually love that. I didn't, I didn't realize that was part of it. So, um, that's pretty much it. Um, getting started with this, this is super cool. Um, and you know, I, I personally love, you know, um, open source and, you know, projects, self-hosted projects like this. So, um, you know, definitely, uh, thank the developer here on, you know, getting this set up and pretty cool. And it's a really nice uh, use case because I can tell you, I definitely have code that I have written that I always try to go back and find in like some other file that I created. And I, it takes like minutes to like hours, depending on where, what I created. So, um, this is a nice tool to just kind of snip it and just allow you to kind of, uh, sort and store your, uh, code. So you don't have to remember, you know, all the little details. So. That's pretty much it for this video. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.